Howdy gang, Carlton Flowers here with the CarltonZone.com and today we're going to start a new series called the iFubar series or I fouled up beyond all recognition my iDevice and so to begin this series we're going to talk about a repair on the iPhone 4 and a common problem that people are discovering when they drop their iPhone in water or sometimes crack and shatter the screen and repair that screen only to find out that when you hit that home button you've got it all back together that there's no light so this is an iPhone 4 that I recently repaired and put on a new display and when I turned it on there's no backlight and so I wondered well what in the world has gone on that has caused this phone not to have a backlight what has happened is the coil the backlight coil has burned out on this phone and it could also be the backlight IC chip that is on the phone now looking at this diagram this is the motherboard or logic board of an iPhone 4 shaped kind of like an L and looking on the phone it kind of sits along here and crawls down the bottom side so that's where it sits inside the phone and with the repair that had gone on with this iPhone we had a damaged IC chip or probably the backlight coil not water damage but when you drop and shatter your iPhone you can damage the IC chip or the backlight coil and here's why with water damage you'll short out the board and so what's happening is you'll get a surge of electricity that burns out this little chip and also the coil when you drop your phone what you don't realize is that sometimes you can crack this uh, board. You can crack the motherboard and it works before you take the phone apart but then when you go to replacing the LCD digitizer combo you turn it back on and notice you don't have a light. Well why is that? Why did it work before and then you don't have a light after? The reason is if you crack any one of these delicate little connections you can cause a short in the board and when it's still working is because everything is held tightly together inside of this case and then you take it apart and whatever is keeping those connections solid has now been relieved so you put the phone back together and whatever crack has occurred on this board that causes a short jumps in and burns out the coil so there you have it I did a little research to find out if I could repair it and I found out that you can buy a replacement chip and a replacement coil here they are right here I'll let you take a look I'll peel these off this little sheet of paper so you can check out the size of the coil and the IC chip so let's take a little close look here and what you're looking at on this sheet of paper is the chip that is about the size of a baby's pinky fingernail and the coil which is about the size of the cross section of a grain of rice so what do you think your chances of being able to get that on this board easily slim to none in fact you have gotta have a special soldering iron where you can set a specific temperature you have to use a hot air soldering iron or an infrared uh, soldering station in order to solder these on onto the board and you also probably would need a stencil that kind of guards the board and doesn't allow you to get solder in the wrong places so that's how you would do this now when I bought this replacement part it was only 15 bucks on eBay you can get them for 15 to 30 dollars and the seller told me oh all you gotta do is go to YouTube you'll find several videos which will show you a step-by-step -step process and you can do it it's a piece of cake once you get used to it well guess what I haven't found one single video on the web showing a person successfully making that repair and there's a reason behind that the thing is like I said before there's a short that is burning out that coil so if you replace the coil what I have found after talking to a repair expert in Springfield Missouri is that the short is still on the board so you put your new coil in and it's gonna burn it out or the uh, backlight IC and it may last a day it may last a month but two-thirds of all iPhones where you do that onboard repair they're gonna burn out again so this company actually does that repair but they charge one hundred dollars and there's no guarantee in other words they're saying don't bring in that iPhone 4 and expect me to put on that coil or IC chip because it ain't gonna work so what's the alternative you can buy a new motherboard which this motherboard on the iPhone is practically the iPhone this is the memory, it's the RAM, it's the graphics adapter, it's all of your information right here. This is the computer, and that's why it's so expensive. A used one you might get for $100 with no guarantee from a broken iPhone. Or you can buy one new aftermarket for between $140 and $200. I don't even know what it would be to purchase this straight from Apple, but that's what you're looking at because you're not going to be able to do this delicate, intricate repair and have any level of success so that's what happens when you either dunk this thing in water or you drop it and fracture the uh, screen you might 
cause a short that burns out those two things. So there's a few things that I recommend to people when you buy an iPhone. Realize that this is a $700 pocket computer. It's not a $199 smartphone because you're paying for the cost of this through your two-year contract with that expensive data plan. That's right. So when you buy an iPhone, you need to get a big, ugly outer box and put around it. Yeah, it's kind of sad that this gorgeous, beautiful, little, thin iPhone needs this great, big, thick box to protect it, but that's a wise investment. And I would also uh, highly recommend that you get insurance for this device. It costs about $100, and it comes with a $50 deductible, but they will replace your phone twice within that two-year period, even if you dunk it in water. Little factoid, did you know that 30% of all smartphones are dropped in toilets? Yes, there's a whole lot of reading on the phone that goes on while people are using the facilities. That's right. So uh, interesting that there are so many people selling these little replacement chips all over eBay. They're scam artists. Don't fall for it. There's also people selling replacement motherboards on eBay, and they're bare. They don't come with any of the chips, and they're only $29. Now, you tell me, who is going to buy all of these individual chips on this board and get them all soldered onto this board successfully? Fat chance. If you can do that, you need to start your own Apple Corporation. That's what you need to do. So that's a little bit about this issue with the iPhone 4 repairing the screen and coming up with that black screen that has no backlight. Now you know the rest of the story. And that concludes our first iFubar series report. Next, we'll be talking about some different iDevices because there's a lot of different things that go on with devices that you have, such as with the iPod video, the old... Uh, iPod video device. It has an 80 gig hard drive. If your battery goes out, it's gone because the battery has a cable that's soldered into the motherboard. How about this? Here is an iPod Touch second generation. The third and fourth generation look very similar. Has a few minor nuances, differences, but the four has a front facing camera. Here's the replacement uh, LCD, which is on the back, and digitizes screen for an iPod Touch fourth generation. This one has a white face, very gorgeous there. But it's a pain in the rear end to get that thing installed on a new iPod Touch. But we'll talk about that in the next report with our iFubar series. Just wanted to educate you and let you know what you're up against and what you need to understand when you have dropped your iPhone to a hard surface and cracked up the screen or gotten it wet and you have that black screen. So be educated, get an insurance plan and guard and protect your phone and don't let it get dropped into water or absorb any moisture because it could end up hitting you in the pocketbook strong. Are you an iPhone repair, per a repair person like I am? I'd like to hear your horror stories or tips, tricks, any information, insight that you have, post it in the comments section. Or maybe you're an iPhone owner and you have a story to tell about a repair. Let us know. It's great to exchange information to help everybody out who are Apple enthusiasts. I used to be one myself, but I'm not anymore. I just fixed them. I switched to Android. I have a Samsung Galaxy S2. Here it is, and I love this phone with the Super AMOLED display. And I had to make the switch because I'm too hard on phones. I can drop this as a lot lighter and does not have such a fragile screen that you have with an iPhone. But at any rate, that's all I've got for now. So stay tuned, and we'll continue the series talking about the iPod Touch 4th generation and the things that I've discovered with doing repairs on it. I'm Carlton Flowers. Thanks for visiting. Check out my other post. Pop in your comments. We'll talk pretty soon.